Discovery's four computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions. All right, everyone, welcome to today's ASRG webinar. But before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about ASRG and get some of the legal stuff out of the way. ASRG is a nonprofit organization founded to support the development of the automotive security industry. We have developed a platform and a community to share knowledge, communicate through networks, and to build value with collaboration. This is a community for you built by you with the goal to protect our friends and family when using automotive products. If you want to learn more about ASRG or get more involved, please visit our website at www.asrg.io or send us an email at hello at asrg.io. Before we jump into the presentation today, let's get some of the legal stuff taken care of. The views and opinions expressed in this webinar are the views of those that have made them. They do not represent views or opinions of ASRG and are to be considered as informational. The use of this information is to be used by the individual and or organization at their own risk. Greetings everyone at ASRG's and PC Automotive's webinar, teaming with the enemy, leveraging a holistic approach in vehicle cybersecurity. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Janos Kovács, and I work as a lead cybersecurity consultant at PC Automotive, and I'm also a guest lecturer and co-author of the Cybersecurity of the Embedded System course at University of Oguda. I'm also proud to be a husband of a wonderful lady, and the father of true, brilliant and beautiful uh, girl at Kovács family. My hobbies include reading fantasy novels, painting miniatures, fishing and working out. Let's just start today's webinar with a funny sounding uh, question that what is common between an automotive ECU and Keith Richards? Let you think uh, for a while. OK. For me, the most similarity is that both needs to operate in a harsh environment with a lot of stress and a lot of workload for decades that is almost unimaginable for most of us humans, right? It is especially true if we consider the challenges of the automotive cybersecurity. First of all, these systems, these vehicle ecosystems needs to operate in the open sea, uh, in the wilderness for decades of time. This, this is not the case for the traditional IT world, right? I have the server room, I have the ability to patch them, I have the ability to replace the items that became vulnerable uh, in the years. And uh, what is the situation with the vehicles? The vehicle is out there, a recall is really expensive, and uh, it is almost uh, the worst case if we think about uh, how easy for the attackers to do the attacks on their own pace, on their own terms, in their own labs, without uh, maybe even the uh, possibility of detecting them. Because if I am just uh, uh, do some uh, denial of service for the backend connectivity of the vehicle, I just dismantle the vehicle, dis disassemble the uh, the ECUs, disassemble the electronic parts, and I'm just uh, start doing my dirty deeds. Uh, and uh, who will stop me, right? If I succeed, I have the keys to the kingdom. If I don't succeed, nothing happens. Think about uh, attacking the server vault of, for example, a banking in in institute. Then this is entirely not the case, right? And uh, it is even worse if we think about uh, how price sensitive is the automotive industry, how thin margins the automotive industry now needs to be operating, right? Uh, this is uh, not like they are able to uh, control a lot of financial overhead creating by the continuous cybersecurity activities, but yet it still needs to be done for due care and due diligence for the regulations. And uh, if we think about how, influence, how large influence the vehicle ecosystems have for our everydays and for our safety and for our life, then it is even common sense to do it so, right? And uh, if 
I have another argument uh, for how economically uh, uh, necessary to take care of the security of the hardening uh, of the cyber hardening of the automotive ecosystems. Think about how en masse these vehicles are distributed, how en masse these computer ecosystems are provided to the customers. If there is one systematic failure for meeting the cybersecurity goals, then it will cause a significant amount of losses, and I think uh, it's worth uh, taking care of. So here we are. Now the whole automotive industry acknowledged the threats uh, targeting the vehicles from the cyberspace. And there is now a very major approach for handling these risks. How ASPICE uh, uh, approaches uh, now? It is really good to see that the Cybersecurity Engineering Process Group is seen as an overarching uh, uh, cluster of activities instead of uh, fragmenting it in the whole automotive life cycle. This overarching uh, group of activities creates like a defensive wind of the automotive industry uh, towards cyber risks. And these activities are together and not necessarily bound to separate functions. And I think this is a key message now that these activities are not necessarily bound to separate functions. Because if we see the cybersecurity activities as proposed to ISO uh, 21434, then we see that uh, there are uh, well defined uh, uh, clusters of activities and clusters of requirements for the separate phases of the automotive life cycle, which is really great because if we need to think it clearly, it is good to see it in this structured manner. And uh, if we need to place the uh, cybersecurity activities in the automotive product life cycle, then it is good to see the analogy of the cybersecurity activities with the whole automotive life cycle. On the other hand, think about an average automotive organization scheme. We have the development team, we have the production team, we also have the testing, we also have the cyber security, the safety, the QM, and uh, several other teams. And these teams in matrix-like organization uh, just serve several projects. Project one, project two, project N, I don't know, uh, it depends on the product portfolio of the organization, right? And while this is financially and uh, uh, organizationally, structurally uh, a good approach and uh, even a fruitful approach for the automotive industry, it has one huge risk. And this huge risk is that uh, the whole organization eventually becomes a set of silos operating uh, together, but uh, quite separately from each other uh, without the sharing of the information necessary to build an awesome product uh, and uh, build an awesome product uh, optimize, in an optimized way, right? And this can cause a lot of uh, overhead, both financially and both strategically to the organization. And uh, this can even prevent uh, the organization to build the product they wanted to build and build the secure product they wanted to build, right? Because, for example, consider that one test team in silo 1.3 uh, discovered a vulnerability, and this uh, information, for example, won't be shared with silo 2.1, the development team of project 2. In this case, uh, it has a chance to, uh, for example, miss the opportunity to collaborate and miss the opportunity to identify a vulnerability that also might be present in project two, but nevertheless, because of these silos, uh, silo 1.3, the test team of project one missed the opportunity of sharing this information that could help out project two as well. This is financially very not optimal, right? What could be the solution for this? 
I brought you a picture of purple. And uh, what is purple? This is a color. And uh, what is purple made up uh, with? Purple is made from blues and uh, reds. And if you think about this picture, purple is not a color in itself. Purple is the collaboration of red and blue, just like the purple team, which is an amalgamation of the blue and the red teams into a single team to provide value to the business, provide value together, which might be much beyond the value provided by the blue and the red, right? It's uh, also important for people who uh, happen to have purple as their favorite color. For me, purple is the favorite color for teams because uh, what is the mission of blue teams? Blue teams defend the system against cyber threats, at least in the automotive product cybersecurity. The uh, terms might be different uh, for the IT uh, security industry, right? So uh, let's just focus now on the automotive product cybersecurity. Blue teams elicitate the cybersecurity requirements, implement TARA, implement the cybersecurity concept, and also coordinate and execute the testing, defining the cybersecurity configuration, monitoring the threat landscape, and managing the vulnerabilities, also their duty, and also they drive the incident management. And what is the purpose and the tasks of the red team? They aiming for the breach of the cybersecurity defenses before the cyber criminals do it. It is also an important and a pretty funky set of tasks, if you ask me. Uh, these tasks include discovering the implementation of the bugs and assessing their exploitability. They also invalidating the cybersecurity goals by seeking for design flows and exploiting them. And uh, they also try to bypass the cyber, cyber defense to find the uncovered uh, attack path by the blue team. Okay, but what happens if we mix them? The outcome of it is the purple team. And the permission and purpose of the purple team is improving the product cybersecurity together. Their tasks are designing the architecture complaint with the requirement and less resilient against these threats from the cyberspace. They also learning the business perspective to understand the concept, context, because the context is the one most important thing uh, if we think about the product cybersecurity, because it is not just the exploitability, it is also the value of the assets. The exploitabilities can uh, provide uh, to get from for the attackers. The purple teams also needs to incorporate the attacker's competence in the definition of the safeguards and also leveraging the defender's competence to increase the efficiency of the offensive examinations. Because it is not just uh, the ability to punch a hole into the defense. It is also the ability to decide that where shall I punch these holes? How can we leverage this holistic approach during the product li uh, development life cycle? First, at the concept phase, the blue team can provide their expertise in the external requirement analysis and uh, collecting and structuring the information of the product architecture. And also, the blue team specialty is the definition of the cyber safeguards, but all of it can be supported by the red team by finding flows in the requirements and collect the vulnerabilities of the components. It is also a good start. At the start, we are able to see that these requirements uh, might introduce new vulnerabilities if we take them uh, word by word, literally, I, uh, I should say. And uh, there are the electronic components, for example, microcontroller units, but we are already know that this microcontroller unit, for example, doesn't log the debug ports if we uh, use this and this security configuration. And uh, for example, in uh, some of the cases, the uh, microcontrollers might be vulnerable, for example, power glitching attacks. So uh, we are able already at the start that what 
could be leveraged from the attacker's perspective. And also, during the Tara, it is the best if we incorporate the attacker expertise, because this is the only way we can provide attack pass analysis, which is actually uh, reflects back to the reality. In the development phase, the blue team can provide the rules for coding guidelines, and also they are able to plan the verification and validation activities, which is good for the organizational perspective, because uh, these verification and active, validation activities are most uh, frequently uh, shared between several organizational units, and uh, this level of management, the blue team process, is really beneficial for the project. And also in the uh, later phases, when there is the feedback from the testing and there is the feedback from the cybersecurity validation team, they are able to manage the vulnerabilities and uh, they are able to drive the fixes of these vulnerabilities before the start of production. Whereas the red team, on the other hand, are able to do uh, security specific activities for the verification and validation. For example, fuzzing, fuzzing the software code uh, and the scanning the products for the vulnerabilities, which are uh, both able to provide uh, the feedback from the resilience of the product in a really predictable way and uh, in a way that is more or less, I should say, easy to be automated. And of course, the execution of the advanced penetration testing techniques and test cases are also something that is vital for the product cybersecurity of the product. And this also can be done by the red team, but supported with the developer expertise and the developer information of the blue team, optimizing the offensive uh, assessment the way that is, uh, I should say, the dream of every project manager because uh, these activities cost money and the most value they provide, the, uh, it is the basically the frequency of uh, gathering and discovering uh, uh, flows, information about the vulnerabilities. In the production phase, the blue team should collect the information of the production process and uh, they also do the threat modeling for the production. And furthermore, they are the one that should drive the defined definition of the cybersecurity controls for the production, because covering the production is also vital uh, according to the ISO standard and according to the regulation 155 and uh, according to, uh, I should say, the common sense. And the definition of the cybersecurity controls for production phase should be also done or at least driven by the uh, blue side of the cybersecurity team. But what should do the red, red side? They should be able to seek the attack surfaces in the production process. And they should enumerate the threats that should, see, uh, that should uh, introduce the attack surfaces in the production process. And uh, in the reality, they should be able to do the scanning for the unknown windows of opportunity in the production ecosystem, because uh, as we see the production ecosystem as a complex uh, internal and even external supply chain for the product, the leveraging of the attacker expertise is something that uh, is invaluable to the cyber hardening uh, process of the product. Okay. The production happened, our product is on the road, and we are uh, enjoying the revenue generated by the automotive products, and uh, we are also enjoying the beautiful view of our vehicles uh, helping the people to travel. That is the operation phase. The operation phase is the longest interval of any product life cycle, uh, ideally, of course, right? And uh, what should the cybersecurity team uh, do for keeping up the cyber resilience of the product during the operation? From the blue side, the monitoring of the open and closed source intelligence is vital because this is the way we can see the cyber threats targeting our products in the operation phase. 
After that, the processing of the cybersecurity information is also vital because there are plenty of information about our product, but what are the ones that uh, might be relevant? And also, there are a lot of information that are not about our product, but can have some analogy to our product, and uh, maybe we could relate to the overall cyber uh, uh, stance of our product by, for example, seeing exploits of similar uh, products or product with similar architecture, and uh, maybe we are able to learn based on other people's failure uh, to secure their product. That is something that uh, could provide a huge business advantage for us, right? And uh, the blue side should be able to manage the vulnerabilities and the incidents during the operation lifecycle because this is uh, not enough just to see the cyber risk, but we need to manage the cyber risk. Uh, from the red team, we should expect the periodic retest of the products because they are the one who present the offensive abilities. They are the one represent the offensive abilities. They should continuously improve themselves as the, uh, the adversary uh, keep improving themselves. So uh, the periodic retest of the product represents the, evolu evo the evolution of the offensive side. And the red team should all, always searching for deprecated solutions to break. This way, they might be arrived there uh, sooner than the bad guys do. And also, the provision of the information learned during attacks, during attacks uh, of other products, during attacks of the same product, is crucial to keep up the pace with the adversary side of the product cybersecurity. And also, it is really important that uh, if we leverage uh, practices that is uh, widely spread in other software security or other IT security areas, such as bug bounty programs, can uh, introduce a really independent, but also very competent uh, uh, point of view. And it is also beneficial for everyone, uh, even including the attackers, to disclose this information first to the uh, OEM, to the vendor, before, for example, starting it selling for money. Because this way, the OEMs and the vendors are able to patch these vulnerabilities. And because these bug bounty programs often contain a significant amount of reward to the uh, discoverers of these vulnerabilities, then it is beneficial for everyone, I should say, because uh, it is a legal way to have the industry and to earn some revenue and it is uh, also morally and ethically more acceptable for uh, most of us than, for example, selling the information in the black market. So uh, bug bounty programs are basically something that uh, should be uh, assessed and evaluated as additional level of uh, leveraging an independent attacker uh, point of view in the product cybersecurity lifecycle. Let me introduce you something which is called the SOAR framework by PC Automotive. It is the security over the lifecycle approach of product cybersecurity concerns, which is a single source security service provided by PC Automotive, uh, uh, providing support for our clients up to tier one level to overcome the challenge of cybersecurity. Because PC Automotive can support the automotive project with, the cyber, uh, with any cyber relevance from the concept phases to the end of life, end of life milestones. And uh, this sole framework is designed to overcome the lack of cybersecurity experts in the job market. Because we are ever, just like uh, uh, any of our clients do, that uh, the automotive cybersecurity experts uh, are not uh, uh, bloating the job market right now because it is quite a new area and the cyber security competence of the automotive industry is still something that needs to be built up in most of the places and uh, even the uh, generalist cyber security experts are uh, not plenty so uh, considering this is a subset of them 
then uh, we are keen to provide you our expertise to overcome this lack of the cybersecurity experts. The SOL framework is designed also to provide cybersecurity as a service. Uh, we are keen to enable you to pass the cybersecurity challenges to a specialist team and keep you focusing your core competence. This also enables you to focus on what you do the best, which is providing awesome automotive products, right? And while you're doing so, PC Automotive will help you to do it even better by uh, hardening your product. Uh, and the automotive experts already count the activities, conduct activities that can be incorporated to the cybersecurity of the product. I think the cybersecurity activities are nothing new to, to the automotive industry. We, uh, even decades ago, focused on how to do a proper authentication, for example, to the ECUs, uh, if we consider the diagnostic uh, uh, surface. We already done the locking of the debug ports to prevent the, any unauthorized activities leveraging the, the debug ports uh, decades ago. And uh, if we are helping you connect the dots, uh, it is something that you can uh, leverage the products and you can leverage the solutions you already do, you can leverage the practices you already conduct, and this way we can uh, dramatically decrease the overhead generated by meeting the cybersecurity compli compliance requirements uh, provided or created by the regulatory landscape and also the common sense. So uh, it is something that can help you optimize the cybersecurity activities the best way you can imagine. What does the expectations of the ISO 21434 towards the automotive industrial participants? And what are the pain points as far as PC Automotive currently sees it? The organizational cybersecurity management is something that uh, is also partially, hopefully, implemented by the automotive participants because most of the uh, organizations are already at some level of governance and the culture, and this should be all, uh, only extended for cybersecurity governance and the cybersecurity culture by adding another focus. And the information sharing inside an organization is already something that uh, that is uh, at least partially should be done, and cybersecurity should be incorporated here. And an organization should have management systems like quality management systems, uh, configuration management systems, and uh, so on, that is demanded by the uh, ISO standard. The organization should already have a tool management, and an organization uh, should already have an in infor information security management system and uh, organizational and cybersecurity auditing process. So what is the overhead? created by the ISO here, really. It is adding the cybersecurity, adding the product cybersecurity considerations. And I think PC Automotive can help you with gap analysis, process development, assessment preparation, and template kits and trainings for that. So it is something that is marked yellow because it is something that you almost there with. And uh, we can help you to get there and reach that compliance unit. What is the situation with the product dependent cybersecurity management? I think it is also something that is partially or at least partially implemented there because the automotive industry now uh, operates with a maturity that uh, uh, also allocates the responsibilities and also have a pro proper project planning and uh, the automotive industry is also able to tailor any requirements uh, to their needs and uh, the reuse of components and the combination with the component uh, out of context and the off the shelf components uh, are something that is frequently practiced by automotive suppliers and the automotive industry as a whole and uh, the cybersecurity case is something new. 
And the cybersecurity assessment is something new, but can be familiar for you if you think about your processes for, for example, the functional safety, if you happen to have uh, products with functional safety relevance. And uh, the release for post-development is something partially new because uh, post-development is something that, uh, for example, I think not necessarily contributes for keeping up of the functional safety aspects of the product, but from quality point of view, a release for post-development is something that is uh, almost uh, fully done. And I think all of these activities should only uh, consider or should only be extended with the cybersecurity considerations. And it's something that uh, PC Automotive can help you with because uh, we can uh, provide cybersecurity project management consultancy and we can provide you training for your project management personnel and this project management personnel uh, will eventually uh, reach a competence level that will enable them to stand their ground in the project management uh, related activities of the uh, cybersecurity uh, standard requirements. This is the same as the distributed cybersecurity uh, activities, which is basically the, uh, the management of the supply chain. I think this is most of you are already expert in, right? If cybersecurity is added as an extension, then the whole will be something that leveraged what you have in an optimized way to reach an ideal or close to ideal level for the cybersecurity co uh, compliance. If we consider the uh, continuous cybersecurity activities, then uh, it is something that almost entirely new. It is something that should be paid uh, dedicated attention by the industry, and uh, we can provide you consultancy for process development, which is basically the establishment of the basis, and then in the life cycle of the product, during the life cycle of the product, we are keen to provide you a consultancy service for the processing of the cybersecurity information, and of course, also the vulnerability management, even the remediation design. After that, during the concept phase, we have a large set of products, a large set of consultancy products, which are basically needed as it is a greenfield investments for most of the automotive uh, organization because the cybersecurity is a new area and uh, there is not much the industry can be uh, can relate to and that could be leveraged as something you already have because it is about the item definition, about the TARA, the threat analysis and the risk assessment, which basically enables you enables you to meet the cybersecurity goals of the whole idea of securing your products. And uh, according to the cybersecurity goals provided by TARA, the cybersecurity concept can be defined. And uh, during the vulnerability management, uh, we should, according to my belief and my understanding strongly rely to the existing threat analysis and risk assessment document and the threat analysis and risk assessment information and the methods we already have. This way we can channel every information to the threat model and via this threat model we are able to uh, uh, leverage while we define the countermeasures for the threats the, uh, discovered throughout the whole product life cycle. About the uh, product development phase, I should say that is something that you are already the best. You are awesome uh, building your products. This is why you are in the automotive industry, right? So I think this is something that can be supported by cybersecurity professionals, but still the main responsible for uh, developing the product, including the cybersecurity safeguards, should be the organizations and the core team of the organizations. On the other hand, 
as the cybersecurity validations uh, required penetration testing techniques and uh, tester independence that uh, is quite new uh, to the uh, automotive industries, industrial participants, then the cybersecurity validation should be supported by penetration testing. And I have a good news. At PC Automotive, we have a strong team of penetration testing who leverage uh, uh, significant uh, experience uh, regarding hardware product and regarding the penetration testing of the hardware product uh, portfolio of the automotive industry. So uh, we reached the post-development phases. The product reached the uh, SOP and the product is already in production. The production needs to have a production control plan. And for the production control plan, uh, we mean that we need to be understand that how is the product manufactured, how is the product reaches from the blueprints to the roads. And for that, uh, if we understand this, we are able to understand our uh, influence on the product cybersecurity posture of the product. So this way, uh, PC Automotive can help you to drive your focus to spot these possibilities to have some influence on the cybersecurity uh, of the product in the production. And we are able to help you uh, in how to define these documents. And during the operation and the maintenance, I think the software update management system is something quite new and quite a major challenge, which is already uh, addressed by the automotive experts because the software update management systems is according to my uh, belief and according to my understanding is something that uh, can leverage a huge amount of competence that is gained by the configuration management experts of the automotive industry. Nevertheless, the software update can pose a significant risk from the cyberspace to the uh, automotive products and for this we are able to support you on your way to uh, implement, define and execute a software update management strategy, which helps you not introduce any vulnerabilities in itself to the product lifecycle. On the other hand, the cybersecurity incident and patch management is also something that is uh, quite new to the automotive industry and for the incident response process definition uh, also with an attitude leverating as much as possible from the practices you already have we are also here and uh, with this here we have a roadmap for the soul which starts with the establishing of the product cybersecurity using the requirement landscaping the scoping project for cybersecurity uh, deliverables, the cybersecurity planning, the threat analysis and risk assessment, including the uh, incorporation, the heavy incorporation of the attack care competence. Of course, using this uh, during the definition of the cybersecurity claims and the goals, the cybersecurity concept derivation, and the cybersecurity trainings of the project personnel is something that is. I should say great for the establishing of the product cybersecurity. If you do this, if we do this, then we enabled ourselves to secure our roads. There is, however, also a lot to do. After that, we need eventually to create the secure product. PC Automotives can be uh, a good support in this as well, because the penetration test of the product is necessary to you uh, for understand that how the cyber defenses will uh, uh, support this resilience of the product. And also the collection of the evidences for the cybersecurity assessment can be a major help because uh, uh, incorporating our expertise in this will help you to structure your data, your, will help you to structure your evidence, the best form uh, it supports the business goals of the organizations uh, and it also can spare you a lot of uh, uh, time that otherwise should be spent for the clarification of the open points left because of the simple uh, uh, 
structure or lack of structure or mismatch of structure of the evidence packages that should be provided to the client, that should be provided to the uh, legislative authorities. We are also able to support the assessment uh, of the status of the project cybersecurity, uh, and we are also keen to create you post-development documentation and the production control planning. And we, if we are done with this, then the product operation start, which can be a long-term uh, collaboration between PC Automotive and your company, because uh, this way you can uh, leverage the expertise of a team for processing and triaging the information of the cybersecurity monitoring. And uh, it is a huge help because this way we are able to manage the vulnerabilities and we are able as PC Automotive to support you in the vulnerability management process by analyzing the field information and driving the patch, uh, patch uh, development in case of need. And uh, it might be also a help for you that uh, we might support you in the establishment of your interfaces with the defect reporting process and the client team or the authorities. Why PC Automotive after all? Because we have a best-in-class vehicle cybersecurity professionals for all areas, including the offensive and including the architect teams as well. Uh, we have client-based solutions for us, the client is the first and the client needs of the first. And the goal is not to provide something that was uh, uh, pre-made and uh, that pre-made uh, uh, basically stock product could be sold to you as something that you must use and uh, you must tailor yourself uh, for this use. But we uh, tailor our products to your needs and uh, to your processes. We also have the uh, ability to provide you independent viewpoints for many angles, but from a single source, which is not just convenient, but uh, also can uh, uh, help you to maintain the consistency of these uh, uh, viewpoints. And also, we have decades of cumulative experience in the embedded world of cybersecurity, which is, I must say, quite unique in the area. Any questions?